Glory to God in heaven. Okay, I just want to jump right into this because we want to see how much grounds we can cover. I'm going to be um, touching as much as I can. We're still on building a healthy relationship and I want to just go into every area. Again, I ask the elderly, the mature, the young, the extra old, the golden ages, the teenagers, all class, bear with the man of God as I'm teaching on this. Pray me up, pray for me, because one, I know, and you should figure out by now, very few pastors want to touch this, and through the teaching, I'll explain why. Glory to God. Okay, so... Um, under God's orders and instructions, I have to do this. So, one, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but please, uh, rest assured, it's for your benefit and it's to bring some answers. And you're going, I believe, you're going to get wiser every time. Glory to God. Okay, so uh, let me start this way. I, I shared two scriptures before, and I, and I I want to start out with those two scriptures again. Okay, so um, I said to you that everything under the sun, there is a purpose for it. Everything. God made everything for a purpose, for a reason. Now, we may not know the real purpose of a thing unless somebody tells us. We can bump into something, we can... Hear people say something about something. And is what we gather from what people say. Then we, we say we learn from that. For example, I've always heard of a rolling calf. I've never seen one. I've, I've heard people talk about rolling calf. And usually are is folks who are from the country. I don't hear much town people talk about that unless it's somebody from country tell them. Or if they went to country and had a rolling calf experience i want to ask the question please bear with me I, I really don't know is any rolling calf crew here <laughs> anybody in the rolling calf ministry I, I don't know all right let me ask this way has anybody ever seen a rolling calf because i ask this almost everywhere i go and there's no hands up but okay, watch this. Have you heard of a rolling calf? Yes. So what I find is that um, I'm still yet to see a person who will tell me they have face-to-face -face seen a rolling calf. However, we have several rolling calf stories. True? And sometimes we believe it. Let me go further. I used to believe that John Kuno was real John Kuno's. So when I used to see them round about a certain time, me get freddy freddy. I'm a run because them ugly looking people, eh? me they think are real ugly looking people. I never know says people dress up. All right, let me ask you because someone look like one I never know either. Eh, anybody out there didn't really think that is sort of, it's a John Kuno look? Not true. Not, you, 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 oh, you see them, you think I saw them look, and at a certain time I hear them come out and they make you afraid. Right? Me used to wear up myself regular, you know. Yes, when me see them and them tell, you know, John Kuna come, our, our parents now take, you know, take advantage of that, say come, you know, me go carry go see John Kuna, and me just say, Mama, me, me tie them around, me cook, me clean, me wash me, because me don't want you let me go up on the John Kuna. Until me see them on Kansan Spring Road. Um, me know them in and the sun, the sun pell the junk on them, you know. And one of them take off his mask and say, Boss, you have, a, you have the water they can't give me. Me say, me say, me say I'm, I'm what kind of junk on this? I beg water. Eh? Him take off his mask. Me say, the sun has pelt him skin under the thing there. And from that, me I say, Oh, I just me wet up myself all them years after. Eh? Them, and and for trust me, you know, it's in the mask where him take off. You know, look too far from the mask. <laughs> 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 all 
God in heaven. Hallelujah. Let me behave myself. Let me behave myself. Hallelujah. So, in saying all of that, I'm saying to you, it's the same way with relationship. We hear of it. We watch movie of relationship. HBO have a good version of relationship. You know, movies. But outside of that, for most of us, we try a thing. So what we discover is, over the years, we've been trying things and it's not working. So for the females, you, you try a guy, seems nice at first, chest flexy, muscular, maybe the perfect man, Netflix man you'd want in your life. Wavy hair, white teeth, maybe until you come close, you realize I'm not really white. Anyway, no, I, I don't want to start out like that. Okay, white teeth, handsome, drive a nice car, the perfect man for you. And you said, this is it. He says he loves you. He said, like Marlon Brandon uh, in those HBO, I love you. And you just melt on Tony Idiot because you believe him. Only to find that months or weeks into that relationship, him hurt you. And so being devastated, few months pass, you get over it fully or maybe halfway, but another guy comes again and you go through the same cycle again. And I say that because for those of you listening to me under my voice, if you check your first boyfriend you've ever had until the one you have present now, if you have any, up to the last one you had before. So I, I, I don't want to mix you up. So if you don't have none now, the first one you ever had and the last one you did ever have. And you say, let me do a little check to see how much boyfriends I ever had in my life. Any of the females ever really do that yet? Or some too afraid for count? Because you can't find that you run out of Han and Tour. And you have to borrow some people and say, lend me your an and foot and tour. It can be uh, like that for some people. And it's as a result of, and, and some of you, as I said, as I said in this message, everybody just smiles so we don't look, so you don't look too serious. So people say, I wonder if I you. So everybody, <laughs> just a smile. All right, yes. So one of the things we notice is, and, and when I say females, I try to focus here first because the females usually get hurt more than the men. The men see it as a ride, the men normally see it as a scalp. The men normally are, it is normally seen out there for a man as a stripe. He conquers. He slays. He ma tapa taps. He ma gallis. He ma dads. So everywhere I go, people say, what boss? Big boss, my big boss. Well, and then after you walk off him, say, boy, the man they have no girl star. And then you, you thump off him, fist and you feel good. But for the females, you don't feel good. And so a man will find that he will go to a movie and the fiesty man will sell the ticket. He says, see him see it, boss? He says, shut your mouth. Both see him see it. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm fiesty. Because... Him see you come already. Right? Him should never mention if see him see it. Eh? So sometimes the girls don't really pick up. But, you know, it means that he has been there with another woman before. So I'm saying now, for the majority of us to where we are today, it leads to divorce, fights, quarrels. Hurts, lawyers, murder, mayhem, and suicide, trauma. And we can go on and on. It makes some people ear drop out. It make, makes some people old before your time. Young, young, young boy grew up. And it's a result of failures in relationship. And when I say relationship, 
You can have brethren and brethren, sistering and sistering, and then it moves to boyfriend and girlfriend, then man and wife. You should never get to man and wife without going through the stage of boyfriend and girlfriend. We good? So there are stages. So as a result of this, nations suffer because we don't know the blueprint for relationships and friend let down friend and we don't know how to identify a good friend. And so we put up with some people and them niam we out. Hallelujah. After them niam we out, I would say them a friend because sometimes them do, they, they are fun to be around, you know. But them, they are like, you know, ticks. Can I say ticks? Ticks better leech. How about parasites? That's too strong. Well, I have a stronger one for you. You have parasites. That is mild. But when you have some who you can refer to them as an epiphyte. <laughs> now, you might not know what is an epiphyte. An epiphyte lives on a parasite. So if you think of a parasite who lives on something or someone for support, think of an epiphyte who depends on the parasite. It's bad to say some people have gone to the stage of epiphytes. So they beg the beggar. They have no mercy. So if them see a beg, a piece of biscuit, just piece of biscuit, you know. You have a man who says, beg a piece of that piece that we have now. It's, it's, it's so, it, 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 you know, it reaches a stage where Mr. People fill a prescription and I walk with a little medication. You know, Dr. Gear, you know, you know, take this for 10 days. Two, two tablets after meal per day for 10 days. And a man say, I beg your song. Beg your two of them tablets in the boss. Just beg your two now. Just beg your two. You know, say, you're gone bad. Not even, not even tablet. Man, man, I beg you too. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to you now, over the years we have missed it that God has set a blueprint for relationships. How they should work if they want to work perfectly. He sets a blueprint for relationship between boy and boy, which is brethren and sistren. And he lays it out. How do I identify a friend? Who is a friend to me? Over the years, what we discover is you only find out who a real friend is when you are in need. All along, when you are giving them, oh, they are the nicest. But you ever get to a place where you can't do for them as you used to, then you realize who you're dealing with. They are the quickest ones sometimes to hurt you, to chat you, to tear you down, and they have no mercy doing it. And so God has set early ways to identify a true friend. Ways to identify a, 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 a boyfriend or a girlfriend, potential husbands and wives. And then God has also set a blueprint for intercourse because sex is more spiritual than natural. However, nobody told us that, so we see it as more natural than spiritual. So it's a touchy topic, and because lots of persons don't touch it, we're having the mayhem we're having today. Fathers not teaching their daughters or son, they don't talk about sex much, and so it's not in the school much. They may talk about a little biology and a little this and that, but not much. And so what is out there grabbing people is what flips on the YouTube or on the internet. What, what, what pop up on your phone and, and people go research and you know, people set things and then people gravitate and then they get in trouble. Because 7 out of 10 of the stuff that happens sexually are spiritual as I said and it invites spirits. So... Let's just open up this. So, we're going to look at this now. Let's just start with the two scriptures I said. 
Proverbs 21, 30. And then John 14, 21. Because I want to show you now that God lays a foundation. He says, there is nothing a human should ever say that should really change you who know the word of God. And sad to say we're allowing people with, um, you know, how they feel and what they believe to trick some of us in changing our direction from the word of God. Let's just read this because everything I'm going to open to you, I'm going to show you through the word of God. That's your weapon. That's your support. Let's go read it. Verse 30. There is no human wisdom. There is no human wisdom. Or understanding. Or understanding. Or counsel. Or counsel. That can prevail against the Lord. That can prevail against the Lord or the word of God. So let me say that from early. No human. So when we teach on something, I'm saying to you, if you can find it in your Bible... If you find someone who tries to let you go against what you read, then this is the answer. Human reasoning trying to supersede the word of God. But it is here. God said early, there is no human. In other words, no accept from no man. Anything that they will say or try to do that falls outside of what his word says. Whether it's a bishop, a pastor, a deacon, an intercessor, and I have to start up the sermon because today the, the world is flooded with ministers and pastors and leaders who are outside of the word of God and teaching people evil, immoral, intercourse practices. And they are doing it with joy. And not realizing they are destroying lives. So I want to start. So no human wisdom. Okay. So God himself says now. There are several persons in the earth. Is only one way I will know if somebody loves me. Because easily we can see people clap hands, sing songs and cry. And we see them love God. But God says, one way to measure if somebody loves me. Let's look at that way. John verse, 14. Verse 21. 21. Read the, it. The person who has my words. The person who have his commandments or his words. And keeps them. And keeps them. That means you don't let it go, yes? Is the one who really loves me. Is the one who really loves me. So if I have some who say them love him, but is not them not really love him. So you have some who love him. And some who really love him. Some who say them love him, but them not really love him. So he says, the one who really loves me now, because you have plenty of people who say them love God. If I walk through this room now, and I ask all of you if you love God, you won't tell me yes. It's very rare I will find one person who said, I don't love God. Everybody will say yes, but this is your check, your checklist. Read it now. And whoever really loves me, whoever really loves me, will be loved by my father. Will be loved by my father. Reasonable. And I too will love him. Yes. I will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. Uh -huh. I will let myself be clearly seen by him uh -huh. and make myself real to him. So this person who really loves God, you're going to have some God encounters. Through dreams, through visions, God is going to show up. He's going to make himself real to you in more ways than one. And all of us would love that. I hope. Let's read some more now. Verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, how is it that you, re you will reveal yourself? Make yourself real to us and not to the world. Yeah, how are you plan for do that? How are you going to show yourself to us and not the world? How are we going to differentiate? He goes further. Verse 23. Jesus answered, if a person really loves me. This is how he's going to know who really loves him now. He said, if a person really loves me. He will keep my word. He will keep my word. Obey my teaching. Obey my teaching. And my father will love him uh -huh. and will come to him 
and make our home abode special dwelling place with him. Mm -hmm. Read some more. Verse about. 24. Anyone who does anyone who does not really love who me. Who does not really love me. Does not observe and obey my teaching. Oh, so this is how I'm going to know who really love him or not. So, so he says now, remember now, from Bishop all the way down to Kishop. Anyone. From Bishop to Ketchup. He says, anyone who no really love me, you're going to know because they don't observe or obey his word or his teaching. And the teaching which you hear and heed is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me, which is Jesus. So all I'm here saying tonight, the teaching that I'm going to teach you, it's coming from the Father who sent Jesus, who sent me to you. So is the Father it come from who sent Jesus, who sent me? So the teaching not change. So is the Father who sent Jesus, who sent me, is the same thing I'm going to show you. We good? Which is the word of God. So this is the basis now. Any pastor or any person who don't have the word of God to support what they say God didn't send them. If you're not preaching any word of God, then you're a motivational speaker. A motivational speaker will sound good. They'll talk about the things of God. But they don't really live it. They inspire you about the things of God. But the trouble is they don't have a scripture to support what they say. They can ho and humph and who and holla and hmm and God and hmm. You, you know them style. And then we give a pair of that. Granny. Say, hoo hoo, ha ha, and tomorrow them they put a rape charge, ha ha. <laughs> Pure or not, but they are pedophiles. So I'm saying we can inspire, we can swivel, we can whatever, but the proof is in the eating of the pudding. Your life, are you obeying the word? Or are you just preaching it? Hallelujah. Okay. So we settle that. So here it is now. I want to jump into Hebrews 13, 4. Hebrews 13, 4. Come on, scripture. When I teach this, plenty of people get nervous. I want to take my time with it. And I want to see how well I can round my words. And be very, very Behaving tonight. Hallelujah. Okay. Hebrews 13, 12. I'm trying my utmost best. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Thank you, Brother Rodney. How am I sounding? How am I sounding around it? Sounding very good. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And for those of you who are in foreign, I trust that you've been hearing me and my foreign accent. Hallelujah. Read it, brother. Read it. Verse 4. Let marriage be held in honor, uh -huh. esteem worthy, precious of great price. Yes. And especially dear in all things. So this is clear. It says, let marriage be held in honor. So I'm going to honor my partner. My partner should honor me. It says, this is a precious thing of a great price. So it costs. When you're married to somebody, is, is a sacrifice this. It's cost, it's an honorable thing, it must be esteemed. So God is, is laying out how marriage should be. So if you're not having this, something is wrong. And we want to show you how to have this, or why you're not having this. Okay, so we see it must be held or kept in honor, esteem, holy, whatever, uh -huh. precious. Mm -hmm. Of great price. Of great price. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, so what it now? So this is how I must treat my, my, my wife. 
and she must treat me. Anna, me must precious, she precious, me precious. Are two precious people get married. If you're not precious, if I'm me one precious and you're not precious, go out your mother's yard, sister, take up your things. Uh, don't walk with me down no aisle. When, when me step out, just, just slip away. Because I'm me one precious. Or, females, if you precious, and him no precious, him not have no preciousness in him, him no plan for treat you precious. You see, when you reach at the back door to the church, and it done upon you, because you know, sometimes, you know, when you're getting married, for those who are not married yet, you know, let me explain something to you. Always for most persons I know, on the day of the wedding, you wonder if I wear you do. You start to say, Lord Jesus, I wonder if I the right thing I do. Hello. Some sweat wash it come like a high scuba. And a cold sweat, a high scuba drop off of your forehead. Cook em, cook em, cook em, cook em. Sometimes you walk, like you feel the foot, I tie up like you say, I wonder where I really go. The morning when you get up to get married, it's like you're a vice now. You say, you know, you're really that though. It's a nerve-wracking experience. And for, and for plenty of people, you know, it's like you're, it's like you're late. You don't fool the dress now fit you. You try it on last week, it fit. This week, if you're married, now the dress now go over your head. It's a one of this. It's a, you can't find your bridesmaid. This a one of, uh, this a, where you, where you boot there? Where you come from foreign? One foot a size eight, one a seven. A two, then, then go in a store and then don't even check his size shoes. So now, you, 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 you're married and people don't even look and see say one a size eight and one a size seven. And so you take it out a store, wrong foot. Glory to God. So you up there, you, and people see it's like your ball and the boot are queasy and a ball. You have, and I'm and happy, happy for the thing that wrong shoes you have on. Talk about, oh, they're so, oh, look at, oh, look at, oh. She's crying. She's happy. No. At the wrong size boot, them buy a foreign and bring up. And it'll make high water run down your eye. God. Rodney, me trying, you know. Where we reach with this thing. We are going good? All right. So now, read now. And thus, let thus. The let, let the marriage bed. Let the marriage bed. The bed, the bed, the bed, the marriage bed. So he brings up a bed argument now. Let the marriage bed. How many understand that bed mean bed? It's only one meaning for bed, you know, and it's bed. Let the marriage bed. So anywhere you want to interpret bed, let the marriage bed. Or the place that you it's a marriage bed, so the place that you're going to take your wife or your husband is your marriage bed. So, some people's bed can be your settee. Some people's bed can be in your car. One and all, say nothing. You never know some man broke down car seat back. Some people. They, anywhere they lay their head, they call it their bed. Okay, let's touch the bed again. It says, let the marriage bed be undefiled. Be undefiled. Sad to say, several persons don't know the meaning of this word. Because when they are repeating stuff, they said, the marriage bed should be undefiled so we can't do anything we want to do tonight. That means they don't understand what undefiled means. So in order to know what undefiled means, you have to know what defile means. It means to mar, to spoil, sully, desecrate. So if defile means desecrate, mar, spoil, sully, then undefiled is the opposite of that. Don't mar, don't spoil, don't desecrate. 
We good? So when somebody said, let the marriage bed be, be undefiled and God say, can do whatever, that means they don't know what undefiled mean. Because undefiled mean, let the bed be free of desecration. Marring. Don't spoil it. It's, it is here. Read, read a little bit more now. For, for God will judge. For God will judge. Let's look now if we see any special category. So I want to walk you slow. You tell me if I am just making things up. Let's read it together. For thus let the marriage bed be without marring, spoiling, don't desecrate it. Don't, don't defile it. All right. It said, let it kept on dishonored. All right. For God will judge and punish the unchaste. Chaste means, is the same thing like, you ever find what chaste means? It means now pure. Holy. So unchaste will be the opposite. God will judge the unclean, the dirty, the promiscuous. Watch it now. All. Oh, we understand that all means all. Okay, so if a pastor is in this, it, does it include in the all? What if it's a bishop? A deacon? It says God will judge what? It said judge not just judging you know, us, judge and the what? All no man, no man, you see how important and word there. The don't miss it, don't miss it. Judge and what? Alright, let's say the man. Remember, say we said but they law. God is going to judge and what? Punish, Punish the unchaste. All guilty of sexual vice and adulterous. So it's not one thing. So we have to separate them. All guilty of sexual vice. Put that one side. Then you have no and adulterous. We fling with sexual vice and just focus on adultery. This is the problem. So now, what happens in churches? Pastors talk about fornicator. You're either a fornicator or you're an adulterer. I make we feel funny. Especially if you just don't fornicate and pastor come and preach about fornication. Leave me, man. Pastor, man. Cha. Preach something else. Hallelujah. Talk about giving. So, what happens in churches is, because this is not explained properly, lots of female now want fornicate. So, you, you want to have sex doing it, but you don't really want fornicate. So, you see a little church boy now. And because you don't know the rules of relationship, you just latch on now because him same like you and him can say, Rabba Shaker, spiritually. Rabba Shaker. And you say, yes, this is him. I hear God in the Shaker. And now, you go get married to him now. And when him ruku, ruku, hello, rudof, rudof you, and beat you, you wonder if I did, 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 And then you find out that you alone is a long line of church sister with him. So, because we don't know what sexual vice is, let me tell you because I don't hear anybody preaching on it. I don't hear anybody saying nothing about it. So, therefore, the church is in lack of knowledge. People who really love God and really, really, really trying to live right are stuck in sexual vice and are punished by the same God who they are worshipping. God have to punish you even if you're worshipping him because he's saying that God do it. So, him have to punish you. You might say, what if me never know? That's why I tell you no. And that's why I'm going to show you why so much believers are suffering. 
Because God already said this. He said he's going to judge and punish. So even if you're a Christian, it don't matter how you just do fasting service. If you touch sexual vice, punishment will come. Now, what is sexual vice? We have to know what this is. If I don't want God to deal with me rough when I'm doing something legal, then I must know what sexual vice is. Me understand adultery. Me understand fornication. Sexual vice, I don't understand. It sounds like Miami Vice. Me watch the movie and it's nice. But sexual vice, no, it, me not to understand that. Let's break the word apart. Let's look at the word vice. Because sex and sexual easier. Let's look at the harder part. Vice. I didn't say voice. Vice. Write this. The meaning of, of vice. Vice means immoral or wicked behavior. Immoral or wicked behavior. Next meaning, criminal activities involving prostitutions, pornography, or drugs. An immoral or wicked personal characteristics. That means you're known for this. People are known eaters, but eating what? And I say this because I have to come real to you because today you have folks who will tell you, women and straight, if you're not doing certain things, you're not getting certain things. This is what means wicked personal characteristics. So I'm showing you. So a trait in a person or something that is immoral that becomes a trait in a person. That means now, when you see them, a this them a deal with. A this me a deal with. If you come near my cabin... I forget some stabbing. Glory to God. I'm mean, not talking knife stabbing because you know you have to talk to the police. There was a certain man, Abimelech. He always say he brought the female in his haram. Glory to God. You hear that sound? Let me break that word in two. Haram. So there is certain, write it down, I'm still talking the meaning of vice, and I'm trying to be very nice. An immoral or wicked personal characteristics. Further, a weakness of character or a bad habit. Okay, I want to group that. Now, this other meaning, I want you to write it. <laughs> write it! You have your pen. This relates to animal. Listen. A bad... Or neurotic habit of stabled horses typically arising as a result of boredom. May we explain it? Make us say it again. A bad or neurotic habit. 
of stabled horses. Underline that word because we're going to use a scripture where a horse is going to come again. Horses and stallions when come to okay but let's just stick out the horses typically arising as a result of boredom well let's look at the word neurotic because we have to break the words words down to make them simpler okay neurotic abnormally sensitive and obsessive Abnormally sensitive and obsessiveness. Okay. You may not understand it, but let me break it down further. You will see dogs animals who will once they are outside for a period of time you will see a dog sniffing another dog's rear or private part licking it running them down running behind them and things like that and stuff it, it look like them a play but him bored sensitive up, 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 obsessive so so it, 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 you, you will find uh, maybe you have some goat when they're on eat. They will make sound like, <coughs> they make some sound or something. And then them just run around them one another. And it look like they, them just get obsessive. It's a sensitive thing. So, so animals, it's really found, as I said, in horses and stallions. If you watch them over a period of time, once they are in the same stable area, after a while, them says when they get bored, them start to smell each other, rare or private part, and, and, and them try rub upon each other and stuff like that because them bored. But is certain instinct placed in animals? Okay. That's vice. Now, when it says sexual vice, let's put the two words, sexual vice, it's really saying now, in intercourse, immoral intercourse, bad habits in intercourse, wicked behavior in intercourse, pornography added to intercourse, masturbation added to intercourse, or fruits, vegetables, dildos, toys added to intercourse is vice. Oral, tasting, eating, oral sex is a vice. It's a wicked behavior. Immoral behavior. Okay. God says now, I'm going to judge and punish all who are immoral sexually. Okay, let's jump now to Ezekiel 23. Let's show you how God feels about this person who did it. Where it came from. How God saw this. In the New Testament, it's called sexual vice. In the Old Testament, you will see sexual immorality. We good? Ezekiel 23. Verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14. This is two sisters. Let's look at the Wasia sister. Yes, read fast so we can take some questions if we have to. But Aholiba carried her harlotries further. All right, so he, he refers to what she does as harlotry. So anything that we list out of the vices came from harlots. These were practices of harlots. Aholiba and Ahola were harlots. They practiced harlotry. 
Now let's look at what they were practicing. And if anything that they are practicing that God calls harlotry, if you take that into your sexual life, you are now practicing harlotry. Reasonable? Okay, let's read it now. For she saw men pictured up she on the saw wall. men pictures on the wall. So remember now, church, them days they never have TV. Because some people looking for TV into this. It, it, so she saw men pictures. So we can modernize it now as porn, blue movie. So she was looking on men pictures on the wall, right? We have TV where we look, we can't see pictures, we can't see film. Okay, so she was looking at men, pictures on the wall, and look what she was looking at now. The pictures of the Chaldeans. Read sketch, up, no man. Sketching bright red fig. Oh, Lord figment. Jesus, he's nervous. He's nervous, he's nervous, he's nervous. All right, or verse, upon read. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Girdle with girdles on Lord their loins. Jesus. Girdle, girdles, girdles. All right. <laughs> read, man, read, man. With flowing turbans on their heads. Yeah. All of them looking like officers. All of them looking like officers. A picture of Babylonian men whose native land was Chaldea. Right, so them come from another part of the island or the country. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Then as soon as she saw the sketches as of them. As soon as she saw the sketches of them, the pictures of them, you know. She what? She doted she on them. She doted on them. And sent messengers. And sent messengers to them in, in Chaldea. She, so she doted. So another word or another, let me explain what dote is. It's, it's critically or uncritically fond of a person. It, uh, okay. Females do it. It's close to flaunting. Like you would. Uh, okay. You will more see it, females, when you drink wine. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, lift me up! Oh, I want to come. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, them way that you go on, like you are idiot. <laughs> Am I being too strong? Okay. So, write the meaning of dot. To be extremely and uncritically fond of, be silly or feeble-minded, especially as a result of old age. Feeble-minded. So, you, you know, uh, me can't do it, but females tend to behave that way mostly when they like a guy, you okay. Another female would have explained. Okay, when a female likes a guy, sometimes she do some strange things. Ladies, we're good. You you agree with me, ladies? Okay. To the point of some other lady will see you and know. Other females have a knock to know when a man have a crush upon a, a girl that them know, you know. Because girls tend to pick it up even quicker than men, you know. So if you're beside a girl and she's in love with a guy, you, you would just know by how she behaves then. So she, she, especially when she's around the guy, it's like she's weak, she's feeble. She, uh, uh, um, when the person comes, uh, um, 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 Marky. No, well, not this really Marky here. <laughs> But we just use that name there. Okay. So, like for example, the female will be talking strong. And as Mark come, uh, 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 help me there, um, Camilla. Get around mic. Uh, 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 she'll talk strong. Listen to me. Use the mic, sister. Use the mic. And what happened there now? Sir, she, st she started talking nice and sounding different. Having a different tone. Like... Like, 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 hi, no, can I use this? Yeah, man, you, you, you use it, man, use it, man, use it, man, Christina, use it. 
Like, say, for example, I was talking to Tanisha, and I said, but Tanisha, what kind of foolish is that to go on with? And then when I see Rodney come, I'm like, oh, so, Tanisha, you know, I'll talk to you later, you know? Yeah, yeah. She acts differently, sir. Right. And then, uh, how you would address him? Like Hi, him. Rodney. Oh, uh, yeah! Or, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you know, say, Rods. <laughs> Hi, Rods. You know? Hi, Rods. Right, so, feeble feeble-minded like you know so okay so now that you you understand that now okay so let's get back to the reading now verse, so read verse, it verse 17 so she doted uh -huh. verse 17 and the babylonians came to her into the bed of love bed of love all right that means now our bed mm -hmm. bed of love it's a bed so we must read bed as more than just bed Come to in our bed of love. She was a harlot. So, in our bed of love. Bed of bed. True? Yes, sir. All right. Read now. And they defined her with their it evil desire. It says they defile. So, remember, no, you know. Remember, we read undefiled. So, defile means to mar, to spoil, to pollute. So, they pollute her with their evil, not good, evil desire. And when she was polluted by, by them, she Jerusalem, or she now broke the relationship and pushed them away. Like females, after the man done with you, and him done go on, him whatever him go on, and so after a while, you just say, go on back to your woman yard. Stop. Done. Done. And you just pitch him off. Can I say that, that like that? You have a part of you who don't want to see him again. Is what? Oh, the place is quiet, sir. Okay. They might listen loud. Okay. So she pushed him off and she done with him. Listen why now? Because she get what she... Remember, you know, she was zeroing on him from the sketch, you know. The picture. So she pictured this. She thought on it. She, she masturbated. She, she was having a porn thing. I know that the, the real thing come to her now. And she, after she finished now and she get it, she must have said, Let me get better than this. I never expect this. Go on, man. Come off, man. You know how to do a thing. Waste my time. After me send for you, we don't have a child in this you come with. Hmm? After me wait, at this you take out. This. This, this, all right, read verse 18. So she flaunted her harlotry. She flaunted, watch this, her harlotry. And That's what it called, you know, her harlotry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And exposed her nakedness. And exposed her nakedness. And I was disgusted. I was happy. Disgusted. Okay, so all of what you're going to read now, you see now, God never liked this. He said, I was disgusted. And turned from her. And turned from her. As I had turned in disgust from her sister. So you see this? So God never liked none of what we're going to read here now. Can I read further now? Okay, read some more. Verse 19. Yet she multiplied her harlotries. She multiplied. That means she never stopped it. She multiplied her Oh, the other thing what she used to do, she multiplied. That means she kept doing it. She kept looking at the sketches. She kept the, 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 all of what I read before. She multiplied means she kept doing it. Let's go down some further. Let's find out what she was doing. Re remembering the days of her youth uh -huh. in which she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. Playing the harlot in the land of Egypt, meaning she was money, money. When she was little. That's playing harlotry. Moving from man to man. When you're small. And most of us. Let me use that word for say. We have gone through our lives. Where we move from woman to woman. Or man to man. That was playing the harlotry. Me never say playing the lottery. So no no look for me. I say we, you, we were playing harlotry. Want to see it? 
me never said play in the lottery. Me said the, the minute we were moving from partner to partner, lack of knowledge, nobody told us, we thought as men we were duns, dapper D. So when you're calling me, you say daps. And I say, yes, my own. And we knock our fists because me a daps. But me never know a hala trip, me that play. For the female, you might not intend to do that, you know. But it so happened that you can keep a boyfriend and you keep moving from male to male. And for some females that tell me, they get bored easily. So after six months, them no want a man there again. Them just run with him and get somebody else. A lady tell me that. Say so she bored. She not stay with no man too long. And the next girl tell me, say, she left man before man left she. Glory to God, I feel sad. So she says, she uh, make sure left the man before the man left she. So I says, oh, you know him I go left him. She says, she now wait for no. She left him first. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's get into the reading some more now. Verse Let's 20. Press. Verse for, 20. For okay, she... so, so verse 20 is what I wanted to focus on. So, okay, what this man does. For she doted, she doted, remember that word, upon her paramours there, yes. Whose loss was Who's senseless. Lost. So these men, it's going to explain to you what they were doing to her. It says these men, their loss was senseless, senseless and vulgar. And vulgar, like, that's not something good. I mean, vulgar mean it, it's raucous, it, it, it lewd, it, 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 it out there. It vulgar like, like that of... Asses, asses and stallion. Stop. We just read about the asses. When them board what them do. Let's back up now. It says these men lost were like asses and stallion. Back up. What does an ass or a stallion do in intercourse or mating? Because you use intercourse for people, mating for animals. You have to first look at what animals do because it says these men behave like how animals behave. Okay, animals don't lie face to face on each other. Animals jump the other animals from the rear. Okay, dogs do a similar thing. So you call that doggy style. So these men were behaving like oh animals, asses and stallions behave. What else did do ass and stallion do? If you look at how they mate, they use their tongue. The reason for the tongue, and I gave this reason, why animals lick the female's private part is God has made animals, their tongue have some some sensitive devices or some stuff in the tongue, made in the tongue. To detect ovulation in the female. So when the animal use their tongue to lick the female private parts. They are not doing it to excite the female animal. You know. They are doing it to test for ovulation. Because they can taste the urine of the animal. Or they can taste the fluids from the animal. Uh, uh, that they are going to have intercourse or sex with. To see if that animal is ready for reproduction. So the tongue is used to taste ovulation in the animal. So these men study what animals do and try it out on a whole lot. So that's what they did, you know. They brought this lifestyle to a whole lot. Anna Oliver. So after she feel this now, she like it. So she continued with this lifestyle. So every time she would meet a man and, and him don't know this, she tell him, said, do this, do this. So it became the harlotry that she was teaching in Egypt. These men lost so remember now, you have to know how animals mate. It says these men were having intercourse like asses and stallion, how they mate. So they do oral intercourse, 
They do doggy style. Everybody know what doggy style is. We can't say doggy style or animal style. So anything that the animal do, animal don't lie on each other. God made humans to have intercourse face to face, lying on each other. We good? If a man stands up for intercourse, he will have struggles in his back and his knees because intercourse was never designed to have standing. Intercourse was never designed for man to go doggy style either. When a man goes doggy style with a female, female asks him, his knees, his hips, his back, is weak, it trembles, it overloads his vein, and over a period of time, he's going to have a blood pressure problem. Over a period of time, he's going to have some erectile issues. Over a period of time, it's going to affect his normal drive as a man. So, so, females, you might not know this because the man them not talk. Because, oh, oh, I don't want some papa, I'm raw peanut. Hello. Not for them knee weak. But them not going to tell you that because I'm not a man. But every man who does that, everyone have a problem because that's a sign to them that God did not design this this way. Anything where you go do a week out your knee and lick out your back. Uh, uh, half, half a day is your week, but you're, you're going like you, you need them weak. Hello, you need them weak out. So females may have bust on the man then. Knee weak. Your foot them wobbly. And your back weak. Tired. So you don't realize that you overload your veins. You can have pressure. And it can also lead down the road to cancer. All right. That's the male. Females now. Because you were not designed to have intercourse that way. Because you have positioned yourself that way. It means now the vagina or the pubic part is now upside down. If you turn your back. It's now upside down. So your cervix is going to get a beating that it shouldn't supposed to get. So you're going to find your suffering pain. The man is going to hit some place um, in your womb or in the ear of your body. You may like it, you know, but you don't realize that you're battering an area that should not be battered. And after a while, you're going to have different infections because once you switch around the private part to having the bottom where the top should be, then it means now that you're going to be prone to infection because the anus is going to be closer now to where the action is. So residue is going to be transferred from the anus to the vagina. Once a man is going that way, you must have infections after a period of time. You will have infections. Two, that woman is also prone to have, if, if you continue to damage or beat against the uterus in that way, she can also have cancer of the cervix. The constant beating. This man coming, beat it. This one come. So same way, same way, same way. Because you like it. Hello, God never make you for turn that way. And so now you are damaging your body. Because this is the design for asses, stallions, and dogs. Because remember how the dog walk and how the animals walk, their private part is turned upside down. But you're one to turn upside down. You're one to turn around the right way. So God designed it for you to be face to face in love. Yes, 
So what has happened now is this. Old time something in a comeback. So all the harlotries and the garments that harlots wear is now selling in stores here as a style. So pool dancing and all these things were things of the harlot. And the little negligee them with the strap come up so. And it, and it, and it, and it hook on to the underwear so. These were clothes of the harlot. Now married couple buy them now. Because you have stores where you can buy them. And you, know, you clip it on so. And you say you're doing it for your husband. And somebody say oh you will dance for your husband. In other words you're playing the harlot for your husband. It comes with a spirit. Vex but love me. Me have to teach you. Now, this is where it get dicey. When an individual is exposed to this kind of life and intercourse, it's going to take you away from the original. So you're going to find that this woman or this man, the one go back to the original, is going to use this word, boring. So you're going to crave and desire because remember what the Bible said is loss. It's driven, it's sensuous, and you're going to have to continue in it because loss craves and keeps you going in that direction. Let me help you now. Check the elderly. I said this before. Older person will confirm. You will never get grandpa and grandma doing some of what them people are doing today. That was never, ever, ever happening. If you ever mention to a girl, well, in my time younger, me couldn't mention this to no girl. Because in the first place, she would know me again. If she, if her mother ever knows me, talk about say, me, me, me eat this and so, me, me now nah come back there. Me, me, me finish, me done. Hello, I would be seen as a, 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 as a, as a freak. A weird man, a dirty man. If the community ever hear me, couldn't go to them, stone me. Let me jog your, ma your mind further because we have a way to forget. You used to have prostitutes in New Kingston area. So all of what I'm saying to you is only there a man could go and get that because your wife not going to swing power. Swing? Where you say? Where you learn that from? You couldn't, hello, you think you could tell your wife or your girlfriend about swing here and swing there, here a swing, there a swing, everywhere a swing, swing? You think you could mention to your wife as you come home, turn around this way? She said, for what? I'm saying to you what we have, what has become the norm. You couldn't mention it before. You think you could mention to your girlfriend, say, okay, I want to eat that. Oh, Lord Jesus. She, hello. Hello. The relationship done same time. Should I say, what? What you say? She just get up and say, no, 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 no. Eh, 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 eh. This done. You are, you is a dirty man. Hello, females, which man could come and tell you, say, put this in your mouth, just behave like his ice cream. <laughs> you would not, can I? I'm already out there teaching this. I'm not straying from the word. I'm not telling you my opinion. I'm just jogging your memory. For those of you who are just young and just born, you're not going to remember. But I'm saying if you're a man and you're over 40 or a female or in your 30s, just go back to your teens. No boy couldn't introduce this to you. It was never me. Check grandma and grandpa a country. Them know one thing. When them ready, them in go and him lie and, 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 and him help himself. And so when him finish, him roll off and drink him rum and go and in bed. Right? Come and talk about grandma for giddy up. What are you talking about, sir? Giddy up. Ask country people. This no, this no happen. So I'm saying now we have accepted into our bedrooms now the vices. So because of that, all the prostitutes disperse. 
because we, it's only there you could get it. But now it has moved into the homes of so many that the prostitutes now run out of ideas. There is no work for them because the homes have now filled with harlotry. So the harlots now are the lifestyle of the harlots we have adopted. Therefore, the woman of the night, you can't find them. Listen why. They don't have no style now. When a man go around now and him find one now and, and she come now, he, the man will start say, but my woman I all go on better than she. Give him, give him back my money. Give me a little discount on this man. You forget a little discount. Can I talk? You, you don't understand one thing when I say that. You, you, know, yeah. no, I say, you stay right here. Say, ah, you, know, you don't know one thing where I go on here. Yeah, you just a uh, uh, usher. You don't understand what I go on. You don't know nothing about them things. You don't know nothing about them things, man. I don't think you have one boyfriend yet. You're, you're young and green and fresh. Hallelujah. How am my friend there? Ah! Jesus. I'm more from here, say, ah. Now, I'm sharing this with you because you have to know what the vices are. So the vices is pornography, oral intercourse, all of what we listed that Ahola was doing. And God says, it's disgusting to him. I'm saying he could not call this detestable, disgusting here and accept it today. That's all I'm saying. If it, is, if it was disgusting, then him can't change his mind now. Then, then warm to Aola and Anna Oliver. Okay. So, so, so let me do this quickly. So there are a few pastors who teach that Solomon in Songs of Solomon did it. And because Solomon did it, it's right to do. Now, I always say... They can't find no other book that no other man has ever done anything but them find one book, Solomon, and one man. Now, the first time a, a pastor presented Solomon to me, that Solomon did it and whatever, she, she figured she had me on the ropes. And maybe she did at the first time. Come, Mr. Wait, we never know say Solomon did. But I went to God. And the Lord said to me clearly, Son, if they had asked me, and if they had only seek me, I would show them too. So God unveiled and showed me everything pertaining to Solomon. Solomon was a sodomite. Solomon did every kind of intercourse. Solomon did everything that Aola and Oliver did. He had oral intercourse, anal intercourse. Solomon was a sodomite. <laughs> Why am I saying? Now I have scriptures to support. Can I show you? Yes. Let us look at the meaning first of sodomite. Or sodomy. You heard about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Sodom. Let's do this quickly. It's all the time I run. A wicked or depraved place. Sodomy. Anal intercourse. Sodomite. A person who engage in sodomy. Okay. 1 Kings 15. We in, we in 1 Kings? Uh, I wonder if I can do this quick. Uh, 
All right, let's, let's start from 1 Kings 11 first, and then I'll go to 15. Just, just read a few lines. Yeah, you just open and read a few lines, and then I'll just jump down to where um, God say he, he never liked what he was doing. 1 Kings 11, verse 1. Read, 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 read. Verse 1. But King Solomon defiantly loved many foreign women. You see that word? Eh? Defiantly loved many foreign women. Uh -huh. The daughter of Pharaoh, yeah. women of the Moabites, mm -hmm. Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, mm -hmm. and Hittites. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. They were of the very nations of whom the Lord said to the Israelites, You shall not mingle with them, neither shall they mingle with you. Yeah. For surely they will turn away their hearts, your hearts after their gods. Uh -huh. Yet Solomon clung to these in love. So you see, God warned him, but him still stay with them. Read some more. Verse 3. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart from God. So he was in a backslidden position. Read some more. Verse 4. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Uh-huh. You see and, that? Uh-huh. Keep going. And his heart was not perfect, complete and whole with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Yes. Read, 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 read. Verse read, read. 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, uh -huh. the goddess of the Sidonians. And this was a prostitute or a whoring god. Keep, keep going. And after Malcolm, uh -huh. the abominable idol you of the that? Ammonites. Abominable idol. Yes, keep, keep going. Verse 6. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Is that evil or good? You sure? Evil in the sight okay. of the Lord. So he did evil. In the sight of the Lord. Uh -huh. Read it. And went not fully after the Lord, as David his father did. Yes. Verse 7. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abominable idol of Moab, on the hill opposite Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abominable idol of the Ammonites. Yes, so much abominable. God, he must set up altar for. Keep going. Verse 8. And he did so for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Yes. Verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. How many, how many, how many of you see that? The Lord was happy with him. Angry with Solomon. Watch this now. Uh -huh. Read Be it. Because his heart was turned from the Lord, uh -huh. the God of Israel, uh -huh. who had appeared to him twice. Who appeared to him twice, two times. Read it now. Verse 10, and had commanded him concerning this thing, uh -huh. that he should not go after other gods. But he did not do what the Lord commanded. So you see, God appeared to him twice. Now jump to verse 14. Let me show you now where God has raised up some man for war against him. Verse 14, the Lord stirred up an adversary against Solomon. Hadad the Edomite, uh -huh. he was of royal descent in Edom. Yeah. Verse 15. Come on, let me leave that leave. So I just want to show you now. God raised up some enemy against him. I run like thief. Let me show you this now. First Kings 15, 11 to 13. Let's just sh show you now that Solomon promoted Sodomy. A Sodomite. Read it. First Kings, you find it in your Bible. So any pastor or person who tell you that Solomon, they draw their scripture from Solomon, I had to show you that God was angry with him for this. God said he was doing evil. Watch this now. Read it. Verse 11. And Asa did right in the eyes of the Lord. He did what? Right, right in the eyes of the Lord. What he did? As did David, his father, forefather. Uh -huh. Verse what? 12. He put away the sodomites. He put away the sodomites. Read it. Male cult prostitutes. Male cult prostitutes. Out of the land and removed all the idols that his father, that his father's Solomon, Rehoboam, 
and Abijam had made or promoted. It, you want it clear than that? That he made or promoted. Keep that there. He removed, you see that? He put away the sodomites. The male cult prostitute out of the land. All of them things yeah, that his father Solomon and Rehoboam and Abijah made or promoted. You know, promote something unless you yeah, deal with it. Read now verse 13. Verse 13. Yes, also, uh -huh. Maacah, his mother, his mother, he removed from being queen mother because she had an image made for the goddess Asherah. Asa destroyed her image, burning it by the brook Kidron. So you see that now? Solomon, so I had to show you where I'm coming from. So if somebody is teaching from the Bible that these things is normal to do, I'm saying they are destroying their children. Let's go back to Ezekiel 23, then I'll take some questions. Verse 36. Let me show you what will happen now. Your kids go going to have illnesses, problems, sickness, unexplained sicknesses. If you notice, there is a rise in the earth of kids who are now autistic. And you will find in a family, three are right, but the last one are one autistic. And you can't understand why. Okay, back up now. Let's examine how we were living. Now, and I want to be clear because there are some kids who are autistic gene-wise because of the gene and it's a family running. But I'm not talking that. I'm talking about those who not have it in your family, but it turn up in your family. After intercourse, the child born, Rudolph. The child is deformed or the child has. And all these things that happen, they are in the book of Deuteronomy that God says will happen when you touch devices. We never had fibroids like how we, didn't have, like how we have them now. And endometriosis and womb problem and stuff. Hello and lump and this and all them kind of thing in a woman body. Hello, back up. Years ago, grandma don't have them sitting here. People used to have intercourse and have kids with ten toes and ten fingers. It was rare when a child born and something wrong with, it, with, with, with the kids. No, it's like every other child. You think that is God's will? No, it's not. It's because we have polluted the bed. We have polluted our spouse and, and, and stuff with these things. And because the body is now polluted, it's going to form or create deformity in our offspring. Let me show you. What may I tell you now? Is God said, Ezekiel 23, read from verse 36. Verse 36. The Lord said, Moreover, to me, son of man, will you judge a holer and a holy bar? Uh -huh. Then declare and show to them their abominations. Yes, yeah, so, so you see, he says, show them, like what I'm showing you, and I'm showing the nations and the people of the earth, the abomination. We're fasting and we're praying, and we're asking God to bring down the murder rate when maybe 80% of those who are fasting and praying are in the vices, sexual vice. That's why the crime is not moving. Read your Bible. There is no place. Even when evil men commit a fast, then get results. We fasting and praying like a series over and over and over and it getting worse. I don't read that in my Bible. I read when people go up on a fast in the Bible. God turn up. Angel turn up. Miracle happen. No, why we can't, you see, we, 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 we try to use excuses for God. As if to say God is still not God. But because we have become a nation filled with immorality and all these things, we are lifting up 
defile our unclean hands before God. Because some of those who are fasting and praying have dildos and have, have stores that sell them. And some of us who, are fa who are lead fasting service, not letting go the doggy style. Neither we not let go with eating habits. So picture this now. You just have oral intercourse and you have it and then you come preach from the platform. No, and you come preach. And can I just add this part? Ladies, you may not know, but I'm saying most men, after you have done what you, you have done to them orally, them don't want you to kiss them, you know. As you try to kiss them, they just turn on them heads so. Ask any man you see. It's very rare. If you do him, and you, want, and you plan to kiss him, him turn him head also. He might look like him and look like so. No. Now, if you flip it the other way, females, he has done that to you. And you feel comfortable for him kiss you after that. So, so he's transferring... You to you. I'm saying now, I know it sounds a way, but I have to teach you. Listen why. If God gives me an assignment, I'm an apostle. It means that I'm a special messenger. That's what the word apostle means, special messenger. That means I will come with messages that others don't have. I, I am anointed to bring messages and to bring answers and solutions to people. I am anointed to go and to correct churches and to build lives. That's my call. So if God send me out, me can't send me now go. Uh, listen, you can frown and whatever, you know. But remember now, your calling might be a hairdresser or a shopkeeper or whatever. No, this is my call and this is what I have to live by. So if God wake me up and tell me, go and tell them that. Hello, it's not nice to preach. I may not feel to go uh, in my own strength, but I know that God command me to do it, so I have to do it. Whether I make the glean or the newspaper or whatever, when that happened to me the first time, I went to God and I said, Lord, you send me to preach this. And them take me and put me in a star, God. And them, them give me not no old tight star, sell off before 10 o'clock in the morning. And I said, God, and I cry out to God, you know. I said, God, them do them call me and give me a thing from out of them sales. All star done before 12 o'clock. All right, my name gone to Australia. Somebody called me from way over. Uh, uh, hello. Australia, somebody make a call and say, hey, you talk about this and that and that. And while I was there complaining, God says, son, me couldn't find an easier way than this to advertise you in your ministry. Him say, uh, it's advertising, advertising you because you couldn't pay for this advertisement. Me say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Greater works has hit every major platform and almost every home is as a result of God saying to me, I have to advertise you and you can't pay for the advertisements. Allow me to do it my way. No? Me say, him say, I send you to Egypt. I send you to Canada. I send you to England. I send you all over the world so that people will know of you long before you reach there. I took a trip overseas some years ago, some months ago, and I was in a Walmart after 12 minutes to one, and I went in there to pick up a few things and we were in there and a lady stopped and said hey you're the pastor that I said me I said ma'am people favor people she said no you're the pastor ah a pastor a pastor me said ma'am you sure it's me she said yes it's you and she said don't move from there and she go on her phone and she said hey Claudia guess who I see here in Walmart it's the apostle that we're talking about yesterday and the friend said you mean Scott I was shocked. Minister one in the morning, you know. So I said to the lady, I said, oh, you recognize me. She said, can I get a picture? I have to show my friends that I met you. And I said, all right. And she just do so selfie same time, boom. And she called her friend and said, look who I'm with. And I said, what is? I went to a store just to pick up a shirt. And as I walk in the store, an old man in them does barely a move, sir. And, and in turn, he said, oh, that walking through the world. 
him not get it good, but me realize say, glory to God. Hallelujah. So God has his way of running an advertisement of his man or woman. You know why? Because lives have been changed. And since some people stop doing certain things, then hello, let me tell you what happened else when you touch the vice. It rob you of your money. You won't keep money. You, you will have regular care problem and regular care accident. Listen, as, as you're sure as today is Wednesday, if you're touching the vice, you're going to have car problem. You're going to have money problem. You're going to have hello you're going to have problems all over you will never keep finances that is one of the things that the scripture said it says it will burn the root of every increase that you get because god already staged it if you practice the vice rest assured your business is going up and down you earn today you lose it tomorrow you you work on them are going to rob you day and night all kind of thing you know why because of the vices so read what it said going to happen to your children now. Hurry up and read this. Make her open the floor. Verse 36. Verse 36. The Lord said, Moreover, to me, son of man, will you judge a holer and a holy bar? Then declare and show to them their abominations, the detestable, loathsome, and shamefully vile things they do. So them still have to be the same now. Read it. Verse 37. For they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. Yeah, that blood on their hands. Read some more. Even with their idols have they committed adultery against me. Uh -huh. They have also caused their sons whom they have born to me uh -huh. to pass through the fire. You hear that? If you go through the fire, born handicapped, suffer in a life, all kind of problem you cause your sons and you're picking them for suffer. See it there, read it. To their images as an offering of food to be, to be devoured by them. Glory to God in heaven. And then read up now. After we don't come to church, come to a seat. Read the rest because it is right there. Verse 38. Moreover, this they have done to me. Uh -huh. They have defiled my sanctuary uh -huh. on the same day of the, their adultery. The same day when them do the doggy style and when them eat what them not eat. The same day them come at church and do what? And have profaned my Sabbath. Uh -huh. Verse, 30, verse 39. Mm -hmm. For when they had slain their children as offerings uh -huh. to their idols, yeah. then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it uh -huh. by daring to offer sacrifice them there also. Tithes and offering also. So them sow them seed. And behold, thus they have done in the midst of my house, in the midst of church. Yes, he said, I know me write it. If you want somebody to blame, blame Camilla. As she read it. So I have to show you, it's right there in the word. We have caused that. Now you might say, Lord Jesus, me never know how we do, how we do. Listen, relax. Turn to your left and right and say, calm down. Turn to your right and say, Neema, calm down. If it never kill you yet, say praise Jesus, I'm still around to hear the truth. You see, oh God love you. Because God know, you never know. And because you never know and you were praying for answers, now you get your answer. So all you have to do now is just say, Lord, me never know. Please forgive me. Help me. Oh God, help me through this. Lord, deliver me from the spirits that come with this. Because all of these vices comes with a spirit. So the spirit that it comes with will remove your natural functions for an unnatural one. So you're going to find that the desire that you normally have for natural penetration will go because you have taken on a new thing. You, you, so it, it, the, the old thing, you don't want that again. So that is going to be your battle. So sometimes you have to ask God now to deliver you and make you new. Help me God to do it right. And then practice the right things and God will come true for you. And you will start get back your money. You will start get back your job. You will start get back your life. But if you continue along this path, you're injuring yourself. 
Let me share this one more. 1 Corinthians 6 from verse 13. It's a food for the body and the body for food, but God will destroy both it and them. The Lord did not make the body for fornication, but it has made the Lord for himself. Please find it quickly. Let's just read that because she's taking long. I might just have to say all of it. <laughs> Food for the body and the body for food, but the Lord shall destroy both it. Uh, you find it? Yes. Okay. Verse 13. Food is intended for the stomach and the stomach for food. Yeah, me not but, see it on the screen. All right, go on. Then can't find it. You read it. Mm -hmm. But God will finally end the functions of both and bring them to nothing. Uh -huh. For the body is not made for fornication. Oh, read, read, sister. Come the body, us, go and do it. The uh -huh. body is not intended for sexual immorality. You see that? It's not intended for sexual immorality. Read it. But it is intended for the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord is intended for the body uh -huh. to what? save, uh -huh. sanctify, and raise it again. Uh -huh. You done? Read now, sister. Verse 14. And God both raised the Lord to life and will also raise us up by his power. Yes. Verse 15. Do you not see and know that your bodies and our members, bodily parts of Christ the Messiah? So every bodily part, listen to what you know, is part of Christ. All your bodily parts. You saw him listen to it. Read what it said now. Am I therefore to take the, but the parts of Christ. The parts of Christ, which is my bodily parts, and what? And make them parts of a prostitute. And make them parts of a prostitute, like a Ola and a Oliver. Parts, the parts of your body. Parts, it's clear. The parts of your body. Hand is a part, foot. One, two, one foot, two foot, three foot. All feet. For men, your three foot, parts of the body. Female, every part of you is parts. He said, shall I make it what? Shall I take, am Sister, I therefore to take, up now. Yes. am I therefore to take the parts of Christ? The parts of Christ. And make them parts of a prostitute? Uh -huh. Read what I'm saying. Never, never. But today them say, yes, yes, always, always, right now, just as me leave you. That is today's version. Because with all we're teaching this, you're going to have some folks who are going to say, him can't say what him wants to say. Including ministers. They will find a way. You see, when them love something, them are gonna find a way that every spirit, because spirit is released to them and they don't realize, you know, the spirit is gonna fight what I say. So even if I reload another a matter of fact, I'm going to reload the scripture them to you tonight. Or up and read that so we can read them out. Verse 16. Or do you not know and realize that when a man joins himself to a prostitute, uh -huh. he becomes one, one body with her? So if you do oral intercourse, then you become a harlot. The practice of the harlot, you become one with harlotry. If you do doggy style, you're going to become one with the dog or the animal. So you're going to have animal spirits are things that enter your space through dreams and vision them going come into your shop it are going to rob your customer your ear are going to pick out all kind of things that animals go through you're going to be one with them and go through the same things as well finish read that sister you're reading in 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 matrix the two it is written shall become one flesh yeah read verse 17 up. But the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Verse 18. Shun immorality. Shun it. Uh -huh. And all sexual looseness. Some. Some become a love. Wife, my love one. Some. All sexual looseness. All sexual looseness. What did he say? Flee. Flee. Flee from impurity in thought, word, or deed. Uh -huh. Any other sin which a man commits is one outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Verse 19. Do you not, do you not know that your body is the temple 
the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God, you are not your own. Verse 20, you were bought with a pr price, purchased with a price. Sorry, Hallelujah. verse 20. You were bought with a price, <laughs> purchased with a preciousness, and paid for, made his own. So then, honor God and bring glory to him in your body. All right, may I take some questions now. Glory to God in heaven. I said I was going to reel off something. Maybe I'll save that for another time. Okay, so okay. Mics now. Let's open the floor a little bit. Time is running away on us. Please. Let's hear. Yes. Okay, Apostle. I'm just asking the two questions on behalf of the wives. We realize that a, a large percentage of wives, they are not, they don't understand. They are having difficulties in learning how to balance uh, going to school with the kids, care for their husband, care for themselves, and also relationship with God. That's question number one. Question number two is that after marriage, after a while, a lot of wives are not no longer interested in sex. They have low self um, sex drive. After m marriage? Yes, yeah, sometimes after. Okay, all right. Let's take the last question first. Okay. Sometimes that can be normal because Remember, responsibilities increase. And um, sometimes when responsibility increase in terms of children, more things to be done, um, duties at work, a lot of mental stuff, then um, the, you, you know, the person could lose interest over a period of time in that area. But one of the things is that it's a feeling, and the females have to understand that one, once you're feeling that you try to go against, because remember, sex is a spiritual thing. So you still have to balance to say, okay, I will not allow the feeling to overtake me. That feeling is there to shut you off and out. So you're going to have to tell yourselves, female, that regardless of how I'm feeling, I have to make time for this. This is important. It keeps us as one so if it's even to say uh well I, I don't know um people say three times a week or some twice a week with um, intercourse for some people it's once a week based on schedule or based on what happens um in the home and sometimes people can just really be tired sometimes too if it's a lack of going out you know going away you know stay home so it's become bored so you can make your life a little bit more interesting when you change spaces. You, you take the person out, a different scenery, whatever. Plan every year or two, three times a year um, to go do something different and, and stuff like that. Go out, change, change your atmosphere a bit. And these things does help. It helps communicate, talk with each other more, share it more with each other. And the older you get in marriage, you're going to crave companionship more than anything else. The first question now was what? You had asked again, um, how to balance um, school and stuff. Okay, so you're going to have to know that's a key word there, balance. Sometimes people take on more than they can chew. If you have children, you have school, you have work, you have husband, of four roles that you're playing. And you have to take care of yourself. Now, if you have a husband or a boyfriend who is not living up to their part, then the four things that you're going to have to do are going to seem like ten. Because him going to be another work where you have to devote to. So that's why it's important for suitable, adaptable, and complementary. So if you're going to go to school, if there is a family situation, then it means that the husband is going to have to fill in in areas that you would normally fill in so that you can complete whatever course that you're going on. It's called helping me to balance. Remember, it's teamwork. So the male has to build the female. Remember that word, build? So you help her. If she is better up here, so up at the head part, than the man, 
okay, and she desires to finish her master's or doctorate or whatever, then it means that the man has to chip in until wife finish her master's or whatever. So is just doing additional functions until the other party can remember his teamwork. If it's for the man, vice versa. It's teamwork. When we can't do it, um, maybe you might have your, your mother-in-law might, might can come over a weekend and help out, or if you have a paid helper, but you can find a way to get the balance working. Okay? And of course, never take on too much females or males that you can chew. Don't bite more than you can chew. So don't go take on four or five subjects where you have to study plus you have a job plus you have children for go to school you have to help them with homework and you have a husband and plus you have a, a little small business where you are run. no you you can't spread yourself so thin okay yes is there another one okay someone online on youtube is asking suppose your husband goes outside of the marriage and practices sexual vice what do you do well well, okay, if the person goes out and practice sexual vice, if you know that they are doing that, then actually they don't know that they are transferring danger into their home. Because one of the first things that they are doing now is they are going to dishonor their home and especially their bed. If you have a wife that sleeps in the bed, you are going to defile and dishonor. But they don't know that and it's going to start to affect one party or another through illness or spiritual attacks. So in that case, um, as I said, we're living in a world now where it has become so acceptable that anything else that goes contrary to that will bring a big argument and stuff like that because the man of God shouldn't set out on him. The business is now a bedroom on, on the man of God. And so because people don't know what the word of God says. Okay, so um, the woman have to gently break it to the man and it comes back to this again, who you choose as your mate because you ought to choose somebody who you can relate to, who you can reason with, who you can talk to. But today we have relationship where the woman can't talk to the man none at all. Him cross, him angry or whatever. Okay, so, okay, so how did you get there or how did you make that? choice you ought to have somebody who you can relate to it should be yes good night pastor good night um, just a brief question as a wife or a partner the female can you entertain your husband you know if you put on a labor a laba garments you into a nice sexy nighty or a short as a wife you can entertain your husband that way of course okay of course you can entertain your husband you can of course yeah yeah you can you can do that but i'm saying now once you take on things that are the vices then remember you know it's a love your wife love your husband honor them make much of them you understand me so you, you can do that but but and, and that is within the boundaries of loving your spouse but once you add things or you you begin to bring the vices into your situation it's going to affect your children it's going to affect your money it's going to affect your business as sure as you know your name or your name it will affect it because that's what the word says yes I have heard a lot. This is a question from Sunday, sir. I have heard a lot about golden showers, which is when a man pees on a woman for, uh, for sexual pleasure. What are your thoughts on this? What are my thoughts on this? Then if you... Yes, okay. All right. Okay. Yes, see where the thing gone now, right? That's what I, I am saying, you know. Little, little, it is going so far off. And it has become acceptable. Now, ladies, if you can slide down or sit down and make a man pee pee pan you, I say pee, pee pee pan you, right? Talking about sexual pleasure. And him pee pee pan you, him defile you, him pollute you. That's a wicked act. 
Well, if you're peed on, please get yourself a good shower. You want to bathe off. You better go and see, go soak in a salt water. Bathe in a sea. Mm -hmm. What if someone is married and dreams of someone else sexually? Does it directly affect the person only while in the dream or in their current situation, like when they get up out of the dream? It going to affect everything. Remember, you know, it's a familiar spirit and it's seeking a way in. It's going to keep doing that. It's going to affect the person's life. It's going to affect you in your sleep. It's going to affect you. It wants to come in and form a stronghold. And so it will affect. So when these things happen, we say we renounce, reject, and you have to put the blood of Jesus on that. Anoint your body if you think that it has been violated or sometimes it's the persons who you're living with bringing these spirits in the house. So you have to check, you know, who you have visiting your house, if they are promiscuous or who in your house are do some crazy things and are bring that kind of presence in your house. Because sometimes that's where it's coming from. Okay, where is the mic? Uh, right here. Good night, everyone. So I'm grateful for the teaching here tonight. I've been in a similar session where they had like Q&A talking about this topic, but they've never all really went this deep, so I'm very grateful for the scripture base, like the scripture base, you know, knowledge behind it all. Because for me, I've always heard, you know, don't do this, don't do that, you know, in terms of sex, but I've always wanted to know the why behind of it to really cement, you know, yes. why I, you shouldn't do it. Yes. Um, also, what jumped out to me yesterday, well, Sunday and today, was the doting. Um, it actually brought up an experience I had, like, long before COVID had happened. Um, there was this person who claimed he liked me, right? And what he would do is he would I call them tactics. So what he did was he had a perfume. And he claimed that the perfume could make you fall in love with him. So he'd rub it on my wrist and, you know, put, him on, put it on himself and, you know, I guess to make me fall in love with him. He'd also write, like, love letters. And then the, the letters had the same scent of yeah, the perfume. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. just thinking, like, is this doting? Like, what is this? But yeah. I just thought he was of a weird character, you know, Believe back then it. you just, mm -hmm. you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you just condone anything. Right. But he's another, he's a, he's a type to like research how to love or how to make someone fall in love with you. So there was this one tactic that he did. Again, lack of knowledge, you don't know. So you just let things slide. That's why I'm grateful for the teaching now. So what he told me was that there are points in the palm where if you massage it you would end up i guess what's the word arrow like arise like you know yeah you feel stimulated thank you all right so he did it and i'm saying i i didn't feel anything but sure enough when i went home i was stimulated so I'm just saying that maybe doting for some per because you mentioned doting in terms of a guy pressing upon you and all of that, but that may not, you know, be the case for everyone. For everybody. That's right. right. That's right. So and and another and another thing, I believe you said that you, you could like someone, but you're working in deception, and that was the greatest takeaway for me because in the end, it was really just the goat nose. It yeah. wasn't necessarily love or a relationship. That's so right. thank you again, Apostle. Yes, man. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And 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 um, one of the things too, I think I mentioned on Sunday is you have this common amongst um, some men who they will select a particular girl that they want, and they know that they want that girl, but behind that girl's back. They are flaunting with other women. And then if any of those women ask them, what about such and such? They would deny that girl. 
So what they're doing is this, you know, putting a curse on, the, on their relationship before it, it ever happened. So what can happen is that you, the girl might be there hopefully that they want to get married, but they could end up never being married to that man. Or that marriage will never last. Because if every time somebody, because you want to flaunt and rub up yourself, you deny somebody who is supposed to be in your life. So it's like a person denying Christ, you know. You, 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 so because you want to flaunt and because you want to flirt, you deny that you and so and so have any re relationship. So denying that you and a person have a relationship constantly, you're killing the opportunity to have a relationship with that person. And so you have also bring spirits into it because you rather to lust and flirt and trick. So the girl who you're rubbing up on and think now, um, maybe start like you. And then only to find out now that you're going to draw for somebody else. Now you're inviting a meeting. Because some women won't take that lightly. And then if the man goes around and he does that with this woman and that one, and then sometimes them kind of slick to, you know, and they will say, you know, um, don't tell Tom or don't tell Ari or don't make this one know that, whatever. Because they know what they're doing. And, and, and if you go say, then them secret are gold. So they're now going to be able to flaunt again. But I'm saying now, is only a foolish woman keeps that secret. If you know the man looking somebody else, and it now gonna be you, okay? It means that you have to make up your mind that you just want to play. So if you just want to play with him, then of course you could say, well, you're not business with that because you just want to have fun. But if your intention is that he's coming your way and you start liking him in that way, then are you going to watch him do that to you? Then leave you for somebody else? And then tell him, a little joke me that run? Eh? Half time, take your goat nose? Eh? And beat it up? Then him say, a joke him did I make? No. And so this is a common thing that happens. And so one of the things we want to look at that because one, that affects life, it affects people. And sometimes, as I said, the person who feel it most is the one who is sitting down there waiting on the person that they are going to be married to this wonderful person and they don't have a clue that this person is flaunting down the old place and doing all kind of things at the same place that they are even taking them. God, that's the bad thing. That they, they could be taking other women in the same place. That they are visiting and not even knowing. That your husband to be or your boyfriend. Have three, four different women over at the same place. Where him carrying you. The place quiet. Okay. Let's just take. Um, he has another one. Let's just take this one quickly then. Then we can reserve. I notice the man them now have nothing to say. The female them kind of quiet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sir, I'm... Yes. <laughs> sorry. Sir, I am so happy to be here tonight. I'm from a big church. Perfect. Why I'm here tonight, Pastor, is... Um, I've been going through, I've been suffering, going through some stuff, you know, some spiritual stuff. I need to talk to you differently anyhow. But I have never had this teaching down to earth like how you put it out, Pastor. I've never had this teaching down to earth how you put it. I believe some pastors will, will look, look on this as being immoral, you know. Some pastor do not go and do this. But sir, you are doing the church something good. And I'm saying to your pastor, keep it up. 
I have to come back to see you because, you know, based upon oh, the, the Lord showed you to me, you know. But I was taking it for another pastor at another address. But recently, the Lord showed to me. And when I, when I saw you, and I, and I sought out the, 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 to get the phone number and call up the, the person, I realized it was you, the Lord, who directed and The Lord directed me too. So I have to see you. Seriously. I am very grateful to be here tonight. Yes, man. And so, one, uh, I'm going to make it possible so you can get, give your number to Brother Leon and stuff and we'll arrange that I can see and meet with you and talk with you off the air. Okay, come on. Give God some praise for that. Give God praise. Remember, I'm saying to you, we want to see a nation and a community crime free. And one of the ways that I think the church is going about it is not the right way. And most persons or pastors may disagree because they don't put any value on moral behaviors. They think it's okay with God to live immoral life and it is not and so we can fast and pray and join hands but we are doing wickedness before God the two don't work and when we read our Bibles we don't see it but yet still we practice it why you think and you know you just think about this there is no place in the Bible where a group of believers, remember, you know, Peter was stuck in prison, lock up, and a few Christians come together and pray, and the man come out of prison, pass the guard them, and come out, come knock at the door, till the people say, This is a ghost. Eh? For sure, you know, the people them come together and pray and got results. And we have so much churches here, so much pastor, so much prayer service and fasting service. And you're going to tell me, say, we are praying, our murder rate will go up, sir? No. That's why I'm telling you the reason it is going up. The leaders are engrossed in immoral lifestyle. And when we lift up hands before God, and some of us join in our politics and we mix up in all kind of things. And, 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 and we're not true men of God anymore. And so one, okay, the cry of the few that are out there is sometimes drowned out by the masses who say they love God but refuse to do the godly things. So I just thought I'd just share that and stuff. So we're going to just, you know, in, um, cap it off tonight since there's no other questions we can um, put them oh you have another one okay yes yes sir so um if two sisters are living in the same house um and sharing the same man can it can it cause the baby like if one of them has a baby to be deformed the person says the person is listening and they want them to get the revelation so while we may have it perhaps they need to get it two sisters sharing the same, same man. man yes sir okay so if it can ca cause the, uh, the kids, baby yeah, to be deformed. Yes, or also if two brothers sharing the same woman, it can cause a problem in the life of that woman or her children. So if you're fooling around two brothers, rest assured it's going to affect your kids or your life. If one brother, a trouble two sister, and if them get pregnant, rest assured, trouble is coming. Okay, how does someone get over hurt when they have been with a person who has hurt them for several years? And they are still with the person? It's not clear to me, Apostle, but... Um, That's why I wish they would, would, would think that. Okay, hurt is always going to be a process. And if people are still together and they are struggling hurt... Then one of the first things the Bible said in James 5, 
you're going to have to confess your faults one to another. So you have to approach. You have to go to the person and you have to relate. You have to tell them how you feel and you have to tell them what it has done and you have to choose to forgive them. And if they don't even want to forgive you but you choose to forgive them, release them and then you ask God to help you to heal those wounds. It's going to be harder for healing if you're still in the same space with the person. Sometimes a break is good. Uh, um, being away from the person until you heal based on what the situation is. If you have to be around the person, then you're going to have to adapt or try to pray for that individual every day until that bitterness leaves your body. Pray love, pray for them that God will do good, deliver them, save them, Lord, God, help them live. So you pray for that individual. Good prayer until that bitterness comes out of you. Until you start feeling a peace over your life pertaining to that individual. Because that's what you do. You pray one for another so that that person can be healed. And while you pray for that other person who hurt you, God will heal your wounds. Okay? That's it. Right there? Good night, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Um, we live at a house, right? I'm not, I'm not hearing you. You have to talk to the man. We live at a yard, we are tenants, and a guy live on the same house with us. In every all three you money bring one for the week. You have to talk in the mic some more, please. I said, right. we, we are tenants right. living at the same house. Right. This guy bring one three women with him, and every night he live with one. <laughs> but as she gone to work, in coming lunchtime with somebody else. So I tell the girl, don't talk to her. And sometimes she skin up her face and pop. But we just laughing after her. <laughs> because we know the whole situation. So we don't understand how that, how that will affect us. Well, okay. Because we are mostly women living in the yard. <laughs> <coughs> okay. If, if he's not in the same house with you, right? then it wouldn't directly affect you. However, if he's in the same yard, and if you discover that one, um, your section heavy, or you're having bad dreams, or, you know, lustful things, because you can't sense it, you know, then you now have to apply the word of God. Play some tapes. You can secure your area and declare some things that that spirit will not come over your section. Draw the bloodline around your, your part and keep yourself and whatever will happen over there is that's what they open themselves to. So until you find somewhere else, if not, that's where you are. Draw the bloodline around your space. Pray your thing, play your tape, praise your Jesus, keep yourself and you just continue. Worship God and that's how you will keep yourself from that. Thank you very much, Pastor. Okay. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Okay. Let's just take one more. Yes. Good night, Apostle. Good night, church. Um, since evening, somebody posed a question about, uh, you know, Apostle, you know the scripture about drinking water from your own cistern? Yes. Yes. Um, I've heard it before, um, people suggesting that it really means um, oral sex. Right? No, if you um, read the thing, it says out of a pure marriage relationship. Yes, I wanted you to explain it, sir, just to clarify it so that people can understand. Okay. Yes. It simply means, all right. That is in Proverbs, uh, let me tell you where that is now. Proverbs, I think it's four or five, somewhere there, down to um, the first. It says, drink water from your own cistern out of a pure mark. In other words, it also talk about let your children be for you alone and not, you know, not spread across the different era. So drinking water from your own cistern, people interpret it to mean... See, there that's, is what Proverbs are, 5, right, 15. Okay, it says, drink waters out of your own cistern 
out of a pure marriage relationship and fresh running water out of your own well. Read the next line now. Verse 16. Should your offspring be dispersed abroad as water brooks in the street. So it's still talking about, in other words, don't go from Uman to Uman. Okay? It's not referring to, and okay, you're going to get two wamis here now. One, what book is this? Eh? Proverbs. All right. Who, who is the wisdom man? Yes or no? Solomon. All right. So them just refer to Solomon. Now we just told you about Solomon. So even if the person interpret this to mean oral sex, we just read that God was upset with Solomon for all the things that he did. So it can't be something we must do then. So that's a double whammy. So what this really means is, if you find a wife of your youth, because it will continue, you know, it's not just this one scripture, you know, it continues to talk about the wife of your youth, whatever. It's really saying, pour into your own wife. Build on her. It's the same thing. Pour into, right? So when you drink water, it means to listen to. It means to absorb from um, each other, right? Things. So I'm going to pour into my wife with what I say. Um, she's going to pour. Uh, I'm going to drink water or words. I'm going to be drinking from her. Not her body parts, but I'm going to be drinking, mean listening to, absorbing from her all of what she's pouring on me or into me. And she's going to be drinking from me in terms of what I teach her, what I pour into her. And then when we are intimate, we have kids of our own and not me. I have three over there, so two down there, so four down there, so. And, and then, so, you know, it says, should your kids be scattered abroad? No. Drink water. In other words, stay with the wife where God give you and you know, minister to each other. This could not mean oral sex. And if it did mean oral sex, it can be something good because we just read Solomon went all out even as a sodomite. And God judged him for it. We just read that. So this can mean a that we fed up. We just read a holy and a holy but did it and God said it was detestable and loathsome. So it can be in a Proverbs as good. You get the double whammy? Alright. So you can't make nobody trick you. Then Listen, a, 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 a particular Christian did, did come to me with that. And I listened. And them said, that is the scripture. And I said, just that alone you have. I said, just, just, just give me one scripture and a man where, where, where somebody do it. One. And then just tell me about Solomon. And, and that are the only scripture them have. And I said, just a little deep, teeny, weeny, weeny one day. And it's still not clear. A little weeny, 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 weeny one day. And hear them go make the mistake now. You have any for sure. I said, no. <laughs> I mean, I opened up my book. And when I start, hear them know, it's all right, it's all right. You, you don't have to go any further. Them no one here. But rest assured, I can tell you, them having some mental challenges in their life, in the, with their children, and they are Christians, and them teaching people sexual vice. It only proves what I'm saying right. Because some of them who are teaching sexual vice are having major challenges with their children and in their marriage and in their own. But they're not telling them church. But, but, but we zero in on it. They're having financial problems. But they're not telling them church. They just have seminar. But we zero in on it. So it's a way of making money, you know. So they will make money. It speaks of it in Revelation 2. The Bible says, The prophetess who called her, Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, was teaching my people sexual vice in the church. It's in Revelation 2. 
I think from verse 18, you can read all of that. And it is there. Okay, we I stop right here. Yes? Somebody wanted to know if taking Viagra is a sin. All right. If a person can naturally have an erection, why would you trouble your bodily function? If a person is having a medical challenge, okay, then there are different medical ways that doctors can recommend to have an erectile dysfunction dealt with. And it doesn't have to mean Viagra. There are different procedures that they can do that can help them, help to increase blood flow in that area of their lives. Sometimes medication that people take can cause uh, different things like that to happen. I should tell you, however, that Viagra has some side effects too that sometimes affect men in various ways. Heart problems, stroke, and different things. So can you imagine, you take a little Viagra, and you, and you don't even get the goat nose yet. You just drop them before you reach it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. Here's, are you around? Um, um, when first name again? Are your Dr. Ron said? Viagra was made for the heart. So? Was originally made. Is a heart medication. But them use it for the foot. <laughs> and then now it, it affect the heart and maybe the head. Okay, so we'll stop here for today. I'm hoping that uh, we have answered enough of your questions and that we have made the scripture plain and simple for you. Um, if not, we'll try to see how we can do it going forward, okay? Father, we thank you tonight for your grace. We thank you for your people. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for touching lives near and far, for bringing transformation, information, revelation. And Lord, I pray that all that has been lost from their lives will be restored as they hook up, as they turn, and as they live for you. Father, cover them, protect them, heal them, keep them. Father, we thank you for divine protection and provision. We give you glory, honor, and praise for victory, for healing, for deliverance, for favor, for open doors. And that you will visit those. Father, for those who really, really want to know and to confirm if you have sent me. Then, Father, you have many ways to do it. We have given them the word. You can visit them through dreams and vision. You can reveal to them once they really desire to know your heart. Father, we commit them to you. And we thank you tonight for the listening ears near and far. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that covers the entire atmosphere and the airwaves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Quickly, you have your tithes, your offering. Uh, prophet is coming to do that part. Your tithes, your offering. Uh, let's just get it. I, th I think some people need to sow a seed for break free from some of th these things. I think some person's life have been stained, polluted, and um, really that has been part of your whole back in life. And I think sometimes we, we can buy a miracle from God, but sometimes we have to try every little thing spiritually. Fast half day, sow a seed, write down some things. Ask God to set you free. Some of you have lost money. You have lost time. You have lost different things as a result of some of these vices. And you want back your thing. The Bible says if a thief be caught, he must restore sevenfold. And some of you need to get back your sevenfold restoration. Because you have knowledge now. Okay, and knowledge is power. Knowledge is key. Man of God, could you come? So get your offering, your tithes.